Howdy, friends. This is Adam Ganser stopping by just to thank you so much for listening to us and all of our precious projects on the Small Beans Patreon. And if you have a couple extra bucks and haven't signed up for our $5 tier, I wanted to let you know there is some of the best entertainment anywhere on the internet just waiting for your listening pleasure. This includes episodes of I'll Show You Mine If You Show Me Yours, Spiel Boys, Star Trek The Next Futurama, and coming soon some very secret but very awesome projects we can't wait to show you. If you got the money and you feel like it, we'd sure love to have it. And thanks so much for listening to Small Beans. Lights! Camera! Action. We're shooting threes, just SMB. We're gonna watch and review film trilogies. It's all for laughs, so just sit back. We're gonna drop hella dimes on this podcast. Okay. Welcome back to Shooting Threes. Welcome back. Diving right in. Sometimes I forget which ones of these I sing the theme song for. I think it's only one. I think it is only one, but every time we but start it feels recording, like I'm you like, should sing. Is this it, now my time to It, it does perform? feel like you should Fuck. sing. It is also a nice uh, cop out for me in the beginning of these podcasts because nothing in this world is harder than beginning a podcast. And you and- know what? <laughs> People are not saying that enough. It's it's the hardest thing you could do. Uh, yeah. You, you should go to school for this, but we're just doing it. Did I just see a movie where there is a class in a university where they're making a No, it's a book I read. It was very good. Oh, she reads books. But we're not talking. I haven't read a book in like four months. So <laughs> I do have the Julia Fox memoir. I just got the email from the library today. My hold is up. So I'm oh. going to read that. Nice. We are talking about a movie that is called The World's End. It's very important that if you go to IMDb, you put an apostrophe in because it's not at the world's end and it's not the world's end. It's the world's and yes, the final film in the Cornetto trilogy, Simon Pegg, Nick Frost. And the boys. Edgar Wright? Yes. Um, speaking of the title of this film, I, trying to Google the name of this movie to see where I could watch it, last night was like a baby boomer searching because I couldn't remember the title of the movie because I remember, I think it was the exact same year This Is The End came out. It was the same year. Because I remember it was kind of the feeling of like, okay, what are we doing with all these apocalyptic movies? Right. I think 2012, like the Mayan calendar shit was also like, right. Well, we we were fresh off the heels of that. And we also had that movie 2012. Yes, 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 yes. Um, My Google searches were like this. I, I knew it wasn't called This Is The End, but I was searching like The End of the World. This is The End of the World. There, there are a the lot of movies- ending and then i was like oh i remember the world's like world's end being a part of it. i was like oh okay by the world's end at the world's end meet me at the like i was like yeah trying all, all these combinations it's just called the, the world's, world's end. end i kept thinking it was at the world's end so i don't know why this title is so hard i honestly because i think it's forgettable i really yeah. don't think because i mean like yeah, it kind of tells, you know, the world's end, whatever. My mom has this thing about, like, if a movie is titled poorly, it's like, forget it's, it. Yeah, no, title's and important. This is a movie, like, I I mean, I watched the movie for the first time, mm-hmm. but it is not a movie I think about when I think about Edgar Wright or, or any even- of these people. I only think of this movie in the context of the Cornetto trilogy, and usually I'm like, oh, yeah, and the third one that's about the apocalypse. Yeah, there is something weird where this feels, a, and I can't, I can't put my finger on it, and maybe we'll figure it out by the end of this podcast. Yeah, but it feels out of line with the other two to me. It's like kind of far removed, right? Like it's a little because thematically it works, it it fits into the trilogy. Yes, but yeah, I think because we spend so much time in a not heightened reality. And yeah. the others feel very heightened all the way through. Yeah. Maybe that's I, what it is. Is this also the longest one of the three? Definitely. Yeah. Because or I will actually, say- isn't Hot Fuzz pretty long? Hot Fuzz is a bit long, yeah. But I will say, as you fact check that, um, yeah. actually, as I was watching the movie, I forgot it was a horror film. Yeah. And so when they introduce- Yeah, Hot Fuzz is two hours. This is under two hours. Oh, okay. Yeah. Damn. Well- it's about 35 minutes before we see anything supernatural or out of I the would ordinary. Say, uh, yeah, I would say more than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because when it happened, I was like, oh, right. Yeah. There's like a sci-fi element to this. Yes, 
That was the whole. So each film in the trilogy has a different color palette. So Shaun of the Dead's red for blood. Oh. Um, uh, Hot Fuzz is blue for the police. This is green sci-fi. Oh, that one feels loose. Again, this whole thing feels a little loose. The, to me yeah, this was just context. a touch watery. Um, but I still, it was much better than what I thought. Perhaps I didn't really have much expectations going into this, just because I never hear anyone talking about this movie. Yeah, to me, this is the one people quote. I was surprised when I looked up, you know, reviews of this movie at the time how how glowing it seemed to be. That's this interesting. Movie, this movie felt very middling to me, especially compared to the other two, which had mm. felt like had such a strong perspective and point of view. I this, felt the same way. This one felt very like thin and a little. I think you just said watery, and that's a good way to put it yeah this is definitely like thematically it's definitely more about interpersonal relationships which i there is value to that versus i, I feel yeah. like the other two like hey really said something yeah a little bit more mm, maybe not so global but relatable i mean this is relatable it is it's well it's weird because a lot of the i think in a lot of ways this movie does sum up the the trilogy well the themes of the trilogy yes well i think it hits them most directly on the nose uh the idea of like needing to grow up in this state of it's kind of a reversal of Shaun of the dead in terms of nick frost and simon pegg playing it is, well it is a reversal kind of like opposite characters yeah, in that way and from both of them uh yeah actually because in Shaun of the dead simon pegg is like he's still the straight man he's he has right. a, his life a little bit more together he's still a child but Less so than Nick Frost's character. Nick Frost's character in Hot Fuzz is certainly the comedic relief. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at, at the world's end, Simon Pegg plays the the loser best friend. Yeah. And he also, in this movie, it's the first one where they have the tripping over the fence gag in every single movie. This is the first time Simon Nick Frost successfully oh. hops over the fence and Simon Pegg runs through it, uh, trips over it. Okay. Uh, so it is... That is definitely a big reversal, and it does kind of hurt when I when I when they first showed Nick Frost in a buttoned up office. Part of me was like, "Oh no, not right." I actually wrote a note. Nick Frost is acting like this is a yeah. character role. This is very like, yeah, he's not just doing the comedy thing. Yeah, he, he has to he has to he's lead. Tapped in. He has to. Uh, yeah, very first note I wrote for this movie is I love how the British name their pubs. Yeah, I love that British pubs are like five hundred years old. Yes. And it's like the foxhole. Yeah. I, I love the a mouse and cheese. Yeah. The cross hands. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great names. And our bars are like toilet bucket. Johnny's. <laughs> I always yeah. say it's the mark of a dive bar if it's named after a man. Sure. Yeah. Mikey's. Right. I mean, Humphreys was ours. Right. I, I would say I would think that's more of a sports bar than a dive Ooh, good good call i just uh, for me a sports bar is like sports bar and dive bar boobies so. <laughs> hooters <laughs> twin peaks <laughs> buffalo wild wings uh, that's the business casual yeah of the sports bars yeah uh yeah love love how british name their pubs also love how the british name things and like this is something i've only recently clocked like in harry potter everywhere they go is called something like, they're never going to the Weasley's house. They're going to the borough. They're always going... They're sure. not going to, like, oh, 42 Grimal Place. It's like, no, it's just Grimal Place. Like, they have, like, names and codes. Right. And I clock this with, like, The Beast. They have, like... Sure. I, I don't know. I just... Did you I, not name... Have you never named a car? Okay. I was never a part of this culture. I was... I never really named my iPod. I never named my hmm. camera. I, I, I never did this. No, I didn't do it with everything, but... I yeah I, I I've named <laughs> this is this is a oh god I barely I don't want to say it because it sounds so douchey now. Or what'd you call your car? Uh, well, it was a it it was uh, a black Mustang. So okay, it, it was called the Batmobile. I mean, yeah, you know, I yeah. well, it was a teenager. I'll allow it. It was also my brother's car it was also a lease so it went away i drove mm. it for about a year but before okay, my brother I feel went like, to college I feel like naming 
a car that you're leasing, though, makes more sense than a car that you own. Because right. my car is nearing 20 years old. Can you imagine if I was like... Ethel. That's still... I was trying to think of something when I was in high school. That's oh, still right. Lady Gaga out there. Right. Like <laughs> Ashley Simpson out there. Okay. A high school wasn't that long ago. That was Ashley my- Simpson. That was an old reference. Was that too old? Uh, Ashley Simpson. That was like middle school, 2007. Okay. But like uh, on the cusp. I suppose. Uh- <laughs> uh, I also wrote down almost immediately, pub slash bar crawls are so overrated and lose the appeal as soon as you turn 25. Well, yeah, because they're, I mean, this movie makes a point. They're hard. They are They're difficult. not for the yeah. weak and even the strong. I actually strong. really like this opening flashback sequence. This is kind of like a more mature way to start this film compared yeah. to, the, like, I feel like, at, like as this trilogy has gone on, they become more sophisticated in terms of the filmmaking, yes. in terms of the storytelling, the storytelling devices. But for me, that actually kind of I loses some of the appeal of the original Shaun of the Dead, which felt very just like first instinct directing, first instinct writing. And now this feels a little bit more like... It becomes a little flashy, and I think you it pays less attention to the pacing of the plot. And perhaps it's inauthentic. A little bit. Dare I, I say that? I think because, I mean, we talked about it early, like earlier in this series with this trilogy, that the way Edgar Wright moves through time in his movies and yeah. paces of movies is very unique and interesting. And the more he plays with those tricks, I feel like the more they skirt around plotting, like actually having mm. to move your story forward yeah. in a cohesive manner. Yeah. Um, And that's, I think, it's weird because at, at some points this movie feels rushed and at some point it feels like it's taking way too long yeah, to get to yeah, the point all at the so same right. time yeah um so just a quick because it, it it would be hard to like walk through this plot stage by stage because no it's i don't little, even i don't even want to fucking I don't, bother no. i don't know they go to 12 bars uh yeah so si- well yeah just there's robots seven. involved shit watch it i don't <laughs> spoiler know spoiler alert <laughs> I kept reading things like spoiler alert. And I'm like, it's a whole fucking movie. It's the movie. It's the like, whole plot of the movie. Even though I forgot kind of what I was watching. I was like, yeah. oh, right. It's like. So you truly had never seen this movie. At I had all. never seen it. No, but I like knew what it was about. I had okay, like, you seen the- images from the film. Nothing was like a huge surprise. Sure. Um, so you knew was there was a, a sci-fi watch. element. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I found it weird. People kept talking about it like it was a spoiler. And I was like, I thought. We all knew this. Well, also just by way, and maybe when this movie came out, people didn't consider this to be a trilogy the way we think of it now. But like, yeah, like Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, they have like supernatural elements involved. Yeah. No, it, it definitely was thought of as like the last in this trilogy. Yeah, of okay. I remember that because I saw it when it came out and that was like the thing. And I was like, I should really sit down and watch the rest of these movies. And then mm. I did on cable and not yeah, really for real. Until now. Uh, but yeah, I, I did read something about how in the trailer kind of spoiled it. It tried to like skirt around the Um, sci-fi elements, but did end up spoiling it because it's such a big point of the plot of the movie. Uh, but yeah, so Simon Pegg and his, uh, is, uh, we find him, he's, uh, uh, recovering. I, I don't, I don't think you can really say recovering, but recovering, alcoholic drug addict yeah i mean um, we just meet him in some kind of a meeting and some sort of rehab facility it's clear he's not taking it seriously because he is telling the story of when him and his friends were you know their last hurrah in high school in their hometown uh you know he had this close knit group of dudes that he hung out with and they at the last day of high school they they knew you know it would never be this good again and they did this bar crawl and they had a great time and they got drunk and got into fights and hooked up with girls and uh, didn't quite make it to the last three pubs, but, you know, Which that is was par for any crawl. Yeah, never make it. No. Uh, yeah. Also, that's a long bar crawl. Twelve? Yeah. Twelve is a lot. And I mean, hey, though, they're British. It's a small town. Like, I'm sure it's just walking down one fucking road. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, brother. Twelve. I know they're not drinking Pilsners either. No, no, they're, I mean, like, yeah, they're yeah, drinking. Yeah, it is lagers, baby, like yeah, heavy. If, yeah, and heavy, heavy lagers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, Simon Pegg wants to get his friends, now he, they're in middle age, uh, wants to get his friends back together and go back and, and give this another shot. Uh, so he does, he rounds up the gang, they all kind of seem reluctant and have moved on and are businessmen. 
one of his best friends, Andy Knightley, played by Nick Frost, does not want to talk to him. Uh, you get the sense that something very bad happened between the mm-hmm. two of them. Uh, but somehow he does convince everybody to show up at their hometown. He picks them up in his old car and they start this bar crawl. Uh, and you kind of get a sense of what went wrong in their friendship and uh, Simon Pegg's character's immaturity throughout this whole thing. Uh, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, things are a little weird in their town. All the bars have been Starbucked, as they called. All these charming pubs yeah. have turned into the same looking corporatized bar, the Buffalo Wild Wings to the <laughs> whatever British pub you want to the right, cross right. Um And people are acting a little weird and it turns out they're all robots uh, put together by the network uh, to who help all the the network is in charge of all the technology on Earth. Yeah, I also got the vibe that they were maybe low-key like Maybe not in charge of other planets in the universe, but like they had some kind of yeah they pre existing relationship with other life forms yeah they so yeah. they're trying to unify they're all the like life a forms union in the universe yeah some sort of unionization effort for the universe and telecommunications well you know how you join the network you get that goddamn COVID vaccine that's yeah, what happens so to you you get plugged into in your and cell phone and, and your head you act like a different person and, yeah. um that really was a thought. <laughs> Watching them, I'm like, thank God this came out in 2013. Yeah, coming out this year and now, Lord God, I yeah, can only imagine. It's a little weird, also because the plot is a little thin. I don't, I don't feel like the whole mission you know of I the network. Kind of clocked immediately about this movie, what? and and what I think is, and I say this honestly as a compliment for all these movies, kind of smart to take two movie ideas that are just kind of weak and then putting them together. Like, here's a movie idea. It's a group of friends that all get together to relive their high school glory days. But the thing is, one person still lives in the past and the others have moved on. And it's a story about how we right. grow up as humans. And then here's another movie idea. There is a uh, extraterrestrial being that comes to Earth. It converts people into NPCs, basically. Mm-hmm. And you can either live in harmony with them and act like everything is fine. Or you can join them. And it's like. Neither one of these, like, they're good pre- sounding premises, but that's yeah. not enough to make a whole movie. So just smash them together. Yeah. And this is the movie. It still it, it still feels a little clunky. One, because like I said, the pacing of this movie is a little off. Yeah. You get, it, it feels a little samey that we have this man child and his friends are he's dragging them around to bars and they're reluctant. And it at some point it lasts long enough that you're like, well, why are you here? Yeah, I will also say maybe this movie fell victim of the fact that in between Hot Fuzz and this movie, there was like 39 Judd Apatow movies that were kind we're about, of the same that premise. That were man child about, and yeah, a man yeah. trying to grow So up. it is a little bit like, all right, we, yeah, yeah for sure. I, I also feel like they missed a lot of, because this movie was trying to do too much, they missed a lot of the nuances that you get in Shaun of the Dead. Yes. And buzz between the friendships of these people. And because you have them turning on each other kind of quickly. Yeah. You don't get the like what the what those relationships are when you have that friend who is stuck in the past. Or even I mean, in this one, it should it seems more like a friend who is stuck in the past in an unhealthy way that you have to let go of. Yeah. And can't. There's something really interesting about that dynamic that this movie doesn't let play out mm. because of this sci fi element that comes in somewhat abruptly. And well, d- they also kind of accidentally made the blanks, is what they're called, right? Yeah, the blanks. Um, they also kind of accidentally made those things completely indestructible. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of felt like very the, easily destructible and that they can like, just knock can, its head off. You can knock its head off, but then it regenerates. Right. The head. I mean, yeah, I think just. So all it the, is a little bit like, so damn, like, what are we supposed to do about this? Yeah. At did, least in Shaun of the Dead, like you could definitively take down a zombie. Right. Yeah. The rules of the blanks are strange because at, at one point they're very weak, but they're also like all the body parts seem to be moving independently from each yeah. other. So like if you know, you can knock off a head easily, but that doesn't mean the head is dead. Right. That too. Um, and then they have, I mean, I did love at the end, Martin Short's character who gets his head bashed in as a blank. Yeah. And he's like half volleyball now. I did think that was very funny. Oh, uh, you know, great work for Martin Freeman. Um, I will also say that like- Martin Short, I said. Yeah, I- Martin Freeman. Martin we got Freeman, it. That's yeah. it, right. Um, I will say that also, I 
thought at the end of the movie when the network was explaining like, well, we want to live in harmony and this is actually for the betterment of humanity. I kind of felt like was almost at, it was kind of challenging the theme of what I thought the movie was, which is about like growing up, coming to terms with reality, taking responsibility. It doesn't quite mesh. And I think no. also something that is telling is when, you know, Simon Pegg and the gang are trying to explain what is great about being a human. It is also a little like watery and thin. They're drunk and they're explaining it and he's an idiot and not very articulate, but he's like, yeah. we just want freedom. We want to do what we want. And, and it's like, but I think, isn't that like bad though? Cause like, yeah, in some respect, yeah. Like in some respects, it seems like you actually could do with some responsibility in your life. Yeah. It doesn't, I think that was where it really fell apart for me is that like final exposition scene. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is kind of like, well, yeah, this is kind of the problem I have with this movie is that I don't know. He doesn't really learn his lesson, but he's still. And not saying that you have to learn your lesson in every movie, but he's not a good guy. And we there's really no see arc. That. Yeah, there, there's no arc. He basically winds up exactly where he he's, started. He's not an anti-hero and he's not a hero. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you're not really. It's hard to root for him in that moment because you want to root for the humans. But he's like, we want to do what we want. And we're like, no, but like. It's like, like that would have meant so much more coming from like Nick Frost. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Again, yeah, it would be interesting to see him be the protagonist of this movie. Yeah, because like um, there was a, a scene early in the film where like all the guys are out and immediately all of them start calling like their wives and, yeah. you know, the, their families. And Simon Pegg is like, see, this is what I like is, you know, I have the freedom, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but what you miss out is that you don't have anyone that cares about you or who loves you. And I kind of right. end the movie like, OK, so yeah, who this, who cares? Right, because at the end Except of the movie. Nick Frost, who again is loyal to him. But we like all of them kind of have a loyalty or like at least a liking to him. Yeah. Which I understand like you, which I could have explored this like, oh, well, yeah, because he is kind of like this reminder of like the fun you had when you were growing right. up. Right. Like, I mean, I can see where that it's what is Shaun, something. Yeah. It's what Shaun of the Dead does so well. And this doesn't really land its plane with that point. No. Um, because Shaun of the Dead, they've learned how to do both. And this one really tries to pick a side. Yeah. Um. And it doesn't quite work out as well. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a strange movie. That being said, there are a lot of like fun parts. I think the action in this movie, the fight scenes are pretty fun. Like when they first yeah. when they first have that fight in that bathroom where they find the blanks and everybody comes in. Yeah, that is a very fun fight. I wrote this down. I don't, and maybe I've already said this, but we don't really consider Simon Pegg to be an action hero, and yet. He's he in our action is. movies. Yeah. Yeah. Like he is actually like one of our most sturdy yeah. actors constantly working action films. And I was thinking like, I'm sure like going back to Shaun of the Dead, they're just writing this movie. I'm sure they're like, dude, this would be fun. Like it, it does seem like all these movies lead from a place of this would be fun for us to do. This would be fun right. for us to make. But I'm like, damn, dude, I've never been in any kind of like stunt heavy work or whatever but i know that's a lot of like exercise a lot of physical yeah, it's training. Not easy. that's a lot of rehearsal i'm like dude so these guys are like i could totally picture like they're cranking this out on paper i'm like this is gonna be so great whatever <laughs> and it's like yeah but now you have to do that but as an actor and probably even more as a male actor but uh don't you want to do that like if you're writing it you're like fuck yes. yeah you're like fuck yes uh, of course especially at the time of even hot fuzz and at the world's end when they have a little money like someone's gonna come here and train me to do this oh i'm gonna punch a guy and he's gonna be on wires and he's gonna fly like i'm gonna look so yeah. kick-ass yeah 100 percent. but i'm sure after day three and your it's whole exhausting. body yeah. is on fire you're probably not thinking that way sure probably yeah like, fuck me man i mean that's why they have the pub scenes you know that's they're, why you know that is true they do balance like all the hard work of all that yeah. with pretend drinking beer and sitting down so yeah good good for them good, good for, for them. them they knew what they were doing that, yeah. yeah but like this this whole trilogy i mean i think they're technically labeled as horror films horror you comedy so? horror comedy yeah, yeah yeah action comedy uh well i yeah, think they'd like, all be different because it'd be like horror comedy true. sci-fi comedy Charmed action that comedy is kind of the more clear cut i mean yeah really that's parody also yeah because it is a parody of dawn yeah 
and of the and dead. Hot Fuzz is a parody of just a million body cop movies. Right, 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 right. But like this, these three. I mean, it's definitely action. Yeah, Star Trek, the Mission Impossible movies. Like, dude, Simon Pegg. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to think of a Simon Pegg movie that's like an indie comedy where he's just like I, doesn't even have to run. Where he doesn't even have to run because I was like, going to say he run, runs fat boy, run. a lot in yeah. a lot of these movies. I man. remember in this movie, run, fat boy, run, because it lives in my head. There's a gross like boil he gets on his foot, and I think about it. Oh, a I'm lot. not familiar with this title. Um, but he's running in that. Yeah, I think he's also been on a couple of Doctor Who episodes, and if you know Doctor Who, that is a lot of running. That's a lot of running. It is mostly running. We love actually. to watch Simon Pegg run. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Everyone gives Tom Cruise all this credit for being great on screen running, <laughs> but like. Simon Pegg. He is... saw Simon Pegg and he was like, I see a brother. Dude, Tom do you Cruise. think Simon Pegg's like low key shredded? I can see that. Like, he's one of those guys that has like the top layer of fat. Sure, sure, sure. But like, he could easily pick up like I, 300 pounds. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was like an ultra marathon runner. Yo, that is he's so got like a right. Run- yeah, that is he's so a runner. Fucking right. Yeah, I don't know yeah, if he's yeah. shredded, but he's definitely a runner. And it's like not a thing, but if you ask him about it, he's like, oh yeah, I wake up at four, I do a two hour run every morning. Like, what? Yeah, yeah. I do like 10 kilometers. <laughs> every morning <laughs> Not. and then on the weekends i do like 15 that okay <laughs> well i don't know he's yeah british it's british that's how he's gonna measure yeah distance. no you're right but the distances i think you're off 10 kilometers um, i'm thinking like a 5k which is like a 5k is like three, three miles something miles yes yeah. i mean i can't do it fuck no <laughs> my knees do would you know though explode. i in recent years have put this thing in my brain where like I'm going to sign up for a 5K. I'm not going to tell I've heard anybody. you talk about this before. And I'm just going to fucking do it. Right here, right now, Small Beans. I'm, I'm going to run a 5K. Let's sponsor Sarah to do a 5K. This is truly the thing about running. I get, and this is my broken <laughs> brain and my yeah. neurodivergence, maybe. It's like boring after a while. Oh, no, it's boring. Cardio is boring. I guess that's I can't. Not- if I'm really that's not you. That's, if I'm that's really like universal. locked in and I'm like, I'm gonna because I've done this where I'm like, I'm gonna run a, a mile right now. I can usually do like an eighth, ten minute mile, which is honestly pretty good for yeah. someone that if you're just getting off the couch and going. So like, I don't know, a 5K in like 30 minutes, like I might be able to do that. Also, the thing about a 5K, you can walk. You can walk. Like you can stop and walk when you need to. Small beans for sponsoring Sarah's 5K. Let's make yeah, her do it. My fi- it's gonna be like a 55 minute 5K. Yeah. I'm going to be like the last fucking bitch. Let's all show up for Sarah's 5K. Please, but do you know that with the New York Marathon, there is a group that famously finishes dead last. It That's takes fun. them like 17 hours to do the whole marathon. That's fun. Because they like walk slash jog. And they finish the marathon at like 11 p.m. I would join that group. Like they, That's they are fun. so slow in the marathon run that like the team taking the marathon down is like right behind them. And but, actually, if you fall behind too long, they'll kick you out. I Because they'll be like, we have to open these streets back up. It's New York fucking city. Yeah. I just don't know. Your entire day is a light jog in and out of Manhattan. I don't know. Not I Manhattan. Do thing where you can walk the length of Manhattan. I would do that. Yeah. But to be stuck in the New York Marathon for that long? Hmm. Also, You're 20, the one holding up traffic? 26 point whatever miles, man. I don't know. I'll leave that to Simon Pegg. <laughs> we'll leave that to Simon I don't, Pegg. I don't think that's for um, me. Uh, speaking of actors in this movie, <laughs> yeah, gagged when Rosamund Pike showed up. Oh. I did not know she was in this movie. Because so, uh, I've seen this movie, and I remember, one, I remember like being like, I don't think I, I remember thinking, like, I don't think I fully got everything in this movie. And on this rewatch, I was like, no, it just didn't hold up. But, yeah, okay. Uh, it has fun moments. Roseman Pike, great to see her. I, I was just good to see her, yeah. I, I, like, did, what? I did not remember she was Sam either. I knew there was a love interest. I knew there was a pretty lady. I forgot it was Roseman Pike. She's great. Our third James Bonder from these yeah, films. Yeah, that's got a, right. We got a Timothy Dalton in uh, Hot Fuzz. We got a Pierce Brosnan in this one and Roseman Pike in this one. Yes. Uh, Pierce Brosnan in this. So hot. Yeah, I feel like Pierce because like this happened. This with is Hot the hottest Fuzz. Pierce Brosnan's ever been. Yeah, and this I is count like, that. Yeah, he's like really yeah. in the zone right yeah. here. Um, I remember with Hot Fuzz that there was like so many A listers that were like, yeah. I just want to work with Edgar Wright. That's yeah, why yeah. Kate Blanchett is in yeah. the movie, like uncredited. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I kind of felt like, oh, it's Rosman and Pierce, their team. Like, 
But I don't think Rosman was that big of a deal. You know what? Actually, no. I guess what was I mean? What is she even that big of a deal? Prejudice? I think Gone Girl had come. No. No, this is 2013. Gone Girl comes out 2014, 15. Yeah, but like she's in her bag at this time. Like I'm sure she's like. Maybe a I don't know. Being passed around. I don't even know if like in t- like post Gone Girl if she's that big of a deal. I mean, she was in Pride and Prejudice. That's pretty much the only pre Gone Girl. Yeah, and this and and Die Another Day, but she's in that for like two seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, with Madonna, of course. Great scene. Great song. Great. Great th- music video. Actually, Die Another Day music video. Great music yeah. video and apparently it's like one of the most expensive music videos of all time i just learned this fun fact next to- it was like an eight million dollar music video that's incredible that's an indie film that's the it, 2000s in, yeah that's a 2010 that's madonna in 2001 incredible or good something? work madonna um banger banger she was on one during this time for sure uh uh i also wrote down a comment sometimes i get self-conscious when me and the loser adult character in the movie have a lot in common oh we were kind of before we were recording airing out some like career woes and just kind of feeling this and that and like some of the things that like yeah Simon Pegg's a fucking loser like yeah driving his old ass car he's going nowhere in life I'm like oh I mean there's nothing wrong with driving a car for a long time yeah no there's nothing wrong with that I mean there were Um, some of us hey hey there are other things wrong with Simon Pegg I mean namely in the big Here's <laughs> one of my other issues with this movie. What should have been a big emotionally cathartic scene when Nick Frost finds out that he left this rehab facility mm. when he finally like reveals his sleeves and he tried to commit suicide. Yeah. That kind of comes and goes pretty quickly. Yes. And we don't, I mean, it's, it's kind of the crux of what our problem is with that movie is we don't really ever come back to the root of that issue and him feeling like alone and in the state of arrested development and needing this, support from his friends yeah um we unfortunately never come back to that because again which is really like very interesting and like yeah i mean this is kind of the meat potato also this is where we meet him yeah in this rehab facility it kind of puts to begin with yeah it kind of could puts context to everything we've seen and uh you know gives him a little bit of gives him some pathos yeah because up until then he's kind of just like destroying our friends lives yeah. Also, Nick Frost's 16 years of sobriety just being thrown, thrown away out the in window. a single second yeah. and then kind of played off as a joke. I also was a little bit like, oh, well, I actually kind of thought, oh, okay, which like, right. I understand what drove him to drink. I get it. It plays for the laugh or whatever. But I was actually thinking prior to that moment, I was like, oh, you know, for British people to be sober, for Europeans yeah. to be sober, like that is actually It's not easy. It it's not easy to be sober yeah. anywhere on earth, but like that culture, especially for men, yeah. really is based in getting these pints at all getting hours of the day. In. Yeah. And again, like I actually thought, like, oh, this is kind of like a layer, like we're kind of talking about alcoholism. Cause yeah, like beer plays a big role. Going to the pub plays a big role oh. in this trilogy. Like yeah. I thought this was like a nice little texture we were getting and it really doesn't go anywhere. And then where it does go is just ultimately out the window with nothing else to be said about it. Yeah, it's it's strange because Shaun of the Dead does it so well, uh, kind of, you know, has has its fun with the man child and, you know, not having your shit together and drinking, but comes around so well to make a good and interesting point when you dissect the movie about like, how you need to grow up, but still hold on to that spark that makes you you and yeah. have fun and let go, but not, you know, but, you know, contribute to the world and care about other people and look out for your friends and family and yeah. significant others and whatnot. And this movie really kind of drops that all for the laugh and for this sci fi plot that doesn't hold up. And then. Similarly, like, and then you go to Hot Fuzz where it's about masculinity and what makes a man and how our, you know, the pop cultural view of masculinity is kind of narrow and not healthy. Also, uh, like, Hot Fuzz, low-key political. Yeah. <laughs> More than that, I would say. High-key, like, some would say. Yeah, about authority and brushing up against that. Like, it's about a lot of things, and I think it lands up playing with the conspiracy theory element and how that directly brushes up against this 
cop story mm-hmm. um, and this cop who's like taking it a little too seriously. And uh, and this one has all of those elements, has yeah. the elements of like wanting to be the king and the man and what that means and how you need to act to secure that. Uh, Finding a balance yeah, in your adult that life identity. of like the time to play, the time to work, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And what it means to be a man and to be free and. Uh, yeah, this one all drops it for this narrative that's like this, I don't know, where it all gets thrown out the window. You have these elements being set up and then you get this robot story and you have these guys coming in and saving yeah. the day. Uh, but the robot's mission is to make everybody all the same. And yeah. it seems just like a total left field from what we're trying to say in these movies. Even though, and I think this is part that's still confusing me, even though in the other movies, like that's what the um, the, hot fuzz people, yeah, they the also fu- wanted, yeah, they like, also wanted that. Everyone to and be the that's same, like, and then of zombie, the zombie inherently that's what yeah, it is. the metaphor of zombies yeah. is everybody is the same. So there is this like counterculture streak that seems to fit in, but it doesn't. I don't know. I I don't think they blend the two well enough in this movie. No, it definitely feels like two separate films. Because like I said, I was literally like a third way into the movie before that bathroom scene happens and then i remembered oh right right and what's so fun there's about- like a thing about this and yeah. Shaun of the dead does it so well, so well teasing the in the blend- outbreak yeah i think and i think that's some of the, like the best stuff edgar wright does is blending any genre with his right kind of wacky silly sensibility I mean, you see that even like especially in movies in the Coronado trilogy, but even movies outside of the Coronado trilogy, like Baby Driver and Last Night in Soho. Yeah. They all have these like very different vibes. Um, but he plays within that and stays true to himself within those vibes very well. This movie feels like he kind of tried to shoe in a sci fi plot. Yeah. Um it got a for little the lost sake. in the sauce for yeah. sure. Which is unfortunate because great performances. Really funny stuff, yeah. but it is. I I would say were the other two movies I saw on cable and would say warrant like a full theatrical viewing. I would say this movie works better the other way around. Where oh, it's interesting. Be- where it's better on cable instead of like a full theatrical viewing. I could see that because yeah, get sitting there and and following it and and trying to think about it doesn't work. But if I just saw scenes from this movie, sure. If I just got to like pop in and see that bathroom fight. Yeah. Um see some of the flashback moments in this. Uh I would think cool, fun. Yeah, it's good scenes, but together it's not so cohesive. Yeah. The banter in the bar, great. Uh I think they're very funny together. I love those boys together. The stuff with Rosemond Pike, I think they play off each other, all play off each other yes. well. I like the Patty Considine Rosemond Pike uh get together at the end. Yes. I also really like the end of this movie when the world goes black. I do. Yeah. I think that works well. I think they yeah. end the movie well. I think yes. it ties. And I think it's actually brave of them to show like, and this is what happened after yes. that night. Yeah. Because I like also, to see that. That was great. I forgot about that part. And it was like, it was looking because you saw that drive away scene, which again, the CGI in this movie is great. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I would say the CGI in 2013 when this movie came out. Better than some of the stuff we got now. Sure, sure. It, well, I think it's a, it, like Edgar Wright has like a light hand with yes, CGI. It's yes. not overwhelming. Yeah. And I think that is when it reads more authentic versus like what we see now where a Marvel movie is like from floor to yeah. ceiling CGI. Yeah. That yes. it, it, it doesn't just, work. It doesn't read. It doesn't work. But there, I mean, there are some great, even the the modern art walking through town yeah. is great. There. <laughs> Again, great set pieces. I like the start the when they go into the second bar and it's the exact same as the old yes. bar. Great reveal. I, I love the pouring of the drinks element. Yes. Great when Simon Pegg pulls that final lever and you're expecting it. And then it goes Yeah, down nice the, little twist. Well, great twist. Um I also love this was like uh, a little trivia Easter egg I found. Uh Gary King. Obviously, a lot of King Arthur references in this. Uh-huh. But when they go to that King's Head pub, it's Simon Pegg's face in the wig on the oh. logo, which is just fun. That's funny. That's fun. But yeah, the end of the movie where they go to the post-apocalyptic world. Again, great explosion, great driving away scene. Yes. Uh, really love that. That was super suspenseful and fun. And I love a scene where a car, obviously, I love a scene with a car going fast, uh, but is out running like something that is... 
yeah. not ending. I mean, yeah. we get that at the end of uh, Fast X, too. Yes, yes. But, uh, yeah, the the explosion running away from is great. Yeah. But, yeah, I love the post-apocalyptic ending where we've been cut off from telecommunications. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh I do think that fits well. I kind of want to almost... I want this movie to work backwards from that scene a little bit more. Okay, right. Like, we start with the Nick Frost doing the narration. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because then you can see how... I, I think the network becomes more nefarious that way. If they're the ones behind yes, all our... Yes, those te- are, like, real stakes. Those are real stakes. If they're the ones behind all our telecommunications, yes, in a lot of ways, it's made us closer and connect, but it's also behind what they call the starbuckification right of things of things right. feeling very samey and being too interconnected and corporate and all of that so it is nice to see them at the end yeah uh, that definitely adds it 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 doesn't pay off the way we want it to but it definitely adds it substance to what I've, we have just watched the last 20 minutes i of. think it it's a strong ending for a movie there, there's something about it that works on a very deep level that I wish worked with, gelled with the rest of the movie a little bit more. Sure, sure. But I do think it does a good job summarizing what the movie wants to be about. Yes. And is about. Um, Even though Simon Pegg's character, I mean, literally goes nowhere. Yeah, that was a disappointing part. It was cool to see Nick Frost uh, talk and yeah, see it was Patty like, okay, Considine and right. Rosemary Pike. And then what is Simon Pegg doing? Still going to bars with the boys. Right. Except now he's like the leader of a blank... Right. Gang. It's like, I don't know how he's better off, which I mean, I was going to say, I guess characters don't have to No, the protagonist does have to go through an arc. Yeah. Or so, or like learn something like, he, yeah, he starts the movie wanting to be the leader of his gang of boys and he ends. The well, movie yeah. Which I mean, I guess he's accomplished that, but doing that, but he he's still rolling around with teenage boys going to pubs. R- well, they're all drinking water. Oh, that's right. They are drinking. They water. are drinking okay, water. So got that going for um, us. So they're sober now. Yeah, but yeah, I guess he. I guess he found. I guess you can say he like found his place in the world. Being, I suppose, this defender of freedom. Yeah, um, of of personhood and freedom. I don't. <laughs> it doesn't make sense that they're rolling with a crew of blanks. No, um, I honestly don't understand that. Choice I feel at like, all, except to say like, oh, well, he's kind of found. Like he can be the king and the leader that he like positions himself to so be as with yeah with amongst these people well, amongst like, these blanks. And not to like overthink it, but like how do they even link up? Why would they link up? Why would these people follow him? It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Like if he's fighting against them, he's also a with a team of them. He's also yeah that it doesn't hold up. I wanted to so badly. Yeah, yeah. It's just it, it, it's a strong ending, but then. Yeah, when you find out he's like rolling with the blanks. One, it is a little disappointing as a viewer to be like, oh, he's just do- back on his bullshit with Pretty people much, who yeah. are not going to question him. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I'm glad he found sobriety in all of that. But you don't really see why or how he came to that. Or it's like not- how it makes him a better or a different person even. Yeah. Forget being better, maybe he's not like even fighting, different. He's fighting for a righteous cause, but he's still like clearly that thing in him that is driving him to want to relive his adolescence is still there in a healthy way or i mean maybe i don't know it still doesn't feel i don't know it doesn't feel like it's in a healthy way because he's still rolling around maybe if he was like if we saw him and he was a teacher of something like niche or something i don't know right like in a way where like he is still connected to young people and youth but not in a way where he's like one of them anymore. yeah he's like trying to give the blanks humanity now i suppose Um, yeah or like teach them how to live life off the grid even but, though he does seem like their leader yeah it, it's, it's just watery it, it's watery it's tough because i want it to work so bad i yeah. liked where it was going at the end i i not the end with the the big sci-fi explainer scene but the post-apocalyptic the reveal stuff. with the nick frost car accident and yes and how Simon peg abandoned him yeah. and then we you know again the reveal that Simon Pegg is coming off of a suicide attempt and, that yeah. this like addiction to this lifestyle has actually caught up to him in a right, very serious way and he's running from that. It's it deals with really serious things and then it never takes them that seriously. Meanwhile, like two of their friends do fully die yeah. during the course of the movie. And I 
feel like no one really gives that any kind of emotional no, beat. Where they're, they're bad friends kind of all yeah. the way through. And if for a movie about friendship, it, it's very self. Like everyone takes a very selfish point of view, except yeah. for Andy at the end scene when he chooses to go back. But he's not the one I'm that worried about. Right. Uh, yeah, they have several friends die. One, even Andy abandons Peter. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, they have. Yeah, they kind of let Peter just die. Yeah. He kind of is just like, bye. It's like, we're not even going to make an effort. No. Or I think, like, actually one of the best scenes in Shaun of the Dead is when Simon Pegg has to come to terms with, like, his mother. Yes. Is going to be turned unless they fucking kill her. It's it's disappointing because these movies have done that so well in And the these past. guys are good act, And they're good in those moments. They're good actors. Edgar Wright knows how to write that plot line and yeah. has been really successful doing that. And I think he's set up. He has such a good setup here to tackle that really well. And it never happens. Yeah. It, this feels like it's going to start being a more grown up movie. Uh, and then it never finishes that circle. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's pretty shallow. Yeah. I, I was surprised to see it's got a pretty high Rotten Tomatoes. It's got, which, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes. What, yeah. did that, what does that mean? But uh, it had really good reviews. And I think people were really, again, the you can't ever say anything bad about Edgar Wright's filmmaking. No, no, no. And that's what I see a lot. Like, the acting is strong. The technique is strong. Visually, it's a great movie to watch. Yeah. But does it hold up? Does it hold up to scrutiny any more than, like... And that's all the other movies did. Yeah. All the other movies warrant and get better the more you kind of marinate on them. You know, I mean, is this not the curse of the trilogy? You're never going to hit it with all three. I cannot think, you know, everyone loves to be like, oh, trilogies where the second movie is better than the first. Name one trilogy where the third movie is actually good. Fifty, sh- <laughs> at, at 50 Shades Darker. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. That actually, that movie does fucking rock. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, actually, the second Fifty Shades movie, I think, is better. The second is better. That's that's when Rita Ora is kidnapped, right? No. I thought that was the second one. I don't know those movies Wait a at second. all. No, because there's a kidnapping in the third. That's when the blonde bad guy is there. I thought Rita Ora was kidnapped in the second. Oh. What happens in the third? Don't they break up in the third for a little bit? They do, but it's with that other dude, with the smarby dude. Mm. With the stalker. Do they end the third movie with, what like, they the have second? kids? No. Oh boy! Ooh, we got to listen to our That's own. That's bad podcast. because I have actually seen the second and third movie in this trilogy twice, so I should know the greatest films we've ever done. I mean, memorable up until <laughs> you ask me what happens in what, what movie. In which case, movie? I yeah, I don't know shit uh, about shit. Yeah, no, this the third kind of for me. It's clearly not the best. You have two kind of classic movies in this trilogy. I mean, Shaun of the Dead is a straight up and down masterpiece. Like yeah. one of the best films. Yeah, you have classics that like people talk about and revisit constantly. I don't know that many people who revisit. We can't even remember the name of this movie. The world's at ritualistically like no. you do the other two. No. We- I don't know people that really even watch the like rewatch this trilogy. Not as a trilogy. Uh, it's kind of disappointing it ends on such a middling note to me because I think if it ended stronger, it would be like we would talk about this as a trilogy more. Oh my God, yeah, for sure. Um, because the first two movies are so, so good. Um, and it also really hurt that literally This Is The End came out. Yes. That, I feel like the same summer. That did and take that, a lot of thunder and not away. Not that I think that that movie is like better. I'm not really ready to make a comparison like that between the two. They're different. They're v- I mean, very different. This is the end is also like every fucking person on earth is in that movie. Every person on earth is in that movie. It is an American made movie with an American with American that movie too. stars. That too. Um, uh, some of the biggest American comedy stars at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not exactly like an indie darling movie like this would be. No, that's true. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it did kind of it got its thunder stolen a little bit by uh, this yeah. is the end. And again, sure. not a good title. Yeah, a title that is weirdly hard to remember, even though it's so simple. A yeah. good name for a pub, though. The world's the world's end. end. Yeah, the, that's pretty funny. The world's end is a good name for a pub. Drinking yeah. at the world's end, getting a pint. 
Of yeah, that's, that's, I, that's, I'd get a yeah. pint there. Yeah, World's End, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Um, I mean, I definitely as a trilogy, like, again, this being the weakest of the three. I mean, hey, it's thematically strong throughout. Yeah. Um, I think this is a team that at least they're having a great time no matter what. You know what? It's not. There are certainly a lot worse movies you can watch. I can't say it's a terrible movie. It just doesn't fully work. And I wish in the in hindsight of the other two, you want it to end a lot stronger than it does. Yeah. Actually, though, I just realized, you know, what is a strong trilogy? Mm. Actually, the trilogy we just did, because Lady Vengeance, like that. Movie oh, that's a strong. Yes. Rocks. Yes. I don't know that you would say it's the best of the three movies, but. I would maybe say it's my favorite. I think of the you three. can. I think you can make an argument for sure. Definitely. I think you can absolutely make that argument. Yeah, those three movies, the Vengeance trilogy. Yeah, that actually is very strong. How yeah. to Train a Dragon? That was also a good three. That's a good three. They're, really they're out there. They're out there. They're always solid. I don't know yeah. if you'd say three is the best. No, almost never. But like great movies, even independent of anything else, I would recommend it. They're out there. You can find them. Um, yeah. Overall, do you think you have? You can put together a ranking. Do you think your ranking stays the same? I think it's in order of released. One, two, yeah. three. I, yeah, I'm still going to give the edge. I, the more I've sat on Hot Fuzz, the more I like it. Um, again, I think it's it runs a little long. I think Shaun of the Dead is a tighter movie and therefore gets the edge. Yeah, true. To me. Uh, I think just story-wise and pacing-wise, that moves the best. Hot Fuzz, very fun, very funny movie. It just runs a little too long for yeah me. yeah uh at the world's end unfortunately just like doesn't land the plane for me no um, again i would sit down and watch this movie on cable but do i need to be like hey guys let's all gather around and watch this movie for no, an hour and 45 no, no, no. minutes unfortunately the answer is no but um all together i do like the coronetto trilogy i i really wanted this movie to be stronger uh and i feel like it was set up to best make the thematic points of the Cornetto trilogy. Yes. And that's why it's so disappointing that it doesn't it land maybe, that like, plane. maybe, like, put too much on its own plate. It did, because it's, it's set up so well to, like, really hammer home how how these movies are all connected and the themes yeah. of them. and you know what? I, this is what I've always felt with Star Wars, but I think this might be true of any trilogy. Like, <laughs> are, I'm your, having your problems. equipment is really it's, going through Yeah, tonight. yeah. Um, I think oftentimes... Yeah, like what we're talking about, the third and final movie in the trilogy gets the responsibility of like summarizing the other two it's movies tough. as well. It's not an easy task. And if any directors are out there, any screenwriters, and you're working on a trilogy right now, just advice, treat that third movie as like a separate movie. Don't worry about the other two. It doesn't have to thematically wrap up fucking years of filmmaking. It could just be a movie on its own. Or just, you know, simplify it, I'd say. Just keep it. Keep it so fucking keep simple. Because simpl we're already fans. Well, we yeah. are. You don't have to win us over. We're already down. I would also say it. It is disappointing because, like, you know, they're pretty young in in Shaun of the Dead. They're like probably mid late twenties, just yeah. starting their lives. Yeah, yeah. Hot Fuzz. They're still. They're probably early thirties. This one feels like the most adult movie, and I think therefore is the most interesting to look at this like Arrested Development theme. Sure. Um, and this child manhood, boyhood manhood development. I think because they're older and it's about getting older more specifically than the other two movies uh -huh. it is the mo it's the most interesting to see want to tackle that theme mm. or it's the movie i most want to see tackle that theme and yeah. i think has the most interesting perspective on it it just never gets there it just doesn't get there it just doesn't get there well uh we have not even discussed what our I next know. trilogy is going to be we have not discussed it but uh but you know we're open to suggestions. Coronetto Trilogy was so fun. Uh, I yeah, did... and it was suggested a lot on it, the Patreon. It was suggested so... a lot. It was a great suggestion. Yeah, uh, if you're a patron, and if not, you should be, um, holler. Let us know what are the good trilogies out there. In case you can't tell, we're trying to pick trilogies that aren't like super duper obvious. Yeah. So if you can even put us on to something that maybe we don't even know about yet. Yeah. We we it's totally down. We like to keep you all on your toes, even if you're directly giving us the titles, right? Um, but stay tuned because we will probably announce it before it's out somewhere. On... Actually, the last few we've just kind of like dropped. We just did it. Yeah. All right. Let us know if you like when we just do it, or yeah. if you want a little heads up. We'll we'll take cues from you. Lead us, audience. Lead us. Yes, and uh, our podcasting 
info Here we go. can be found on Instagram at BS Podcasting. I think that's the new ba, name. Ba, ba, new handle, BS Podcasting. Wait, let me double check that. We just changed it, and Sarah is in charge of it. Um, Because I don't BS like it. BS Podcasting. Camp. BS Podcasting, all one word. Yep. It's now going to be our catch-all for when we post um, yeah. episodes. But of course, like I said, if you're a member of the Patreon, That's you where you get know. the best info. Yeah. Or if you're subscribed to Small Beans on iTunes or Spotify or any podcatcher, that is also a great way to keep in touch. Yeah. Uh, Support the Patreon if you can. We're making a movie over there. And so your support is going further than ever for us. Um, Yeah, you can catch us on BS Podcasting. That's where we'll make announcements on Instagram. That's where we'll make announcements about our podcasting ventures and fun stuff we're up to. Yep. Yep. and yeah, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. I'm at Bridget underscore Greenberg and on Twitter X, whatever that doomed website is for now. Um, yeah, twitter.gov. Just, uh, yeah, at Bridget Tweets. I'm at SK underscore Griffith. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys on the next trilogy. Which will be what? something. Something. It'll be a movie. It will be movies. It will be three movies. Lights, camera, action. <laughs> We're shooting threes, just SMB. We're gonna watch and review film trilogies. It's all for laughs, so just sit back. We're gonna drop hella dimes on this podcast. <laughs>